When you think of Canada, what do you picture? Is it the breathtaking landscapes and majestic mountains? Summer campfires in Muskoka with classic rock in the background? Or perhaps our peaceful and humble people known for their kindness and hospitality? But what if I told you that beneath this serene facade lies a dooming disaster? A crisis so profound that it threatens to unravel the very fabric of our nation. High debt levels. A new report from Desjardins shows Canadian household debt is among the highest in the world. And with more on that, we're joined now by Desjardins Vice President and Chief Economist Jimmy Jean. So this is not a ranking where you want to make the podium. Where does Canada sit? Yeah, well, it's uh, high up there in the uh, the list of countries we're, we're looking at. It's in, it sits in the third uh, position. Uh, now, uh, this is not necessarily something that happened overnight. Uh, we know that uh, Canada has had uh, a, a problematic household debt uh, for, for many years. A volatile housing market. Canada's record growth in population continues with an additional 1,348,000 added in the last 12 months, which adds to the worries about housing and health care. Lack of affordable housing is the biggest economic threat, mainly because it makes it so tough to attract talent. Uh, the rule of thumb also, and this is on that housing market, you need about 50 new units for every 100 increase in the population. Well, we're not in the ballpark of that and an over-reliance on natural resources are just the beginning. Are we on the brink of an economic meltdown? Is the Canadian dream slipping away? Well, the cost of government is driving up the cost of living. Half a trillion dollars of inflationary deficits have been up the cost of the goods we buy and the interest that we pay. Inflationary taxes have increased the cost of businesses, farmers and workers to produce those very same goods. To understand this crisis, we need to know how we got here. Canada and the USA share the longest international border on Earth, stretching 8,891 kilometers. Our two countries are literally tied at the hip and have a long friendship in history together. We fought side by side in two world wars. We created many new policies during the Great Depression to help both of our countries persevere, many of which we still have today. And we are each other's biggest trading partners with 80% of the Canadian population living within just 100 miles of the US border. But why is the United States economy so much stronger than ours? Why are they the world's leading economy in Canada is dropping ranks month by month, getting worse and worse. See, there's an old saying that when the USA sneezes, the world catches a cold. Well, right now the US is sneezing, but Canada is almost in a coma that it's never gonna wake from. So what happened? How is Canada losing its edge and competitiveness in the global market? This is the big problem with Canada's economy. So first and foremost, we need to address the housing market, something so many Canadians are battling with, especially millennials and Gen Zs. I mean, this is how ridiculous it is. On the Canadian side of Niagara Falls, you have homes selling anywhere from seven to $800,000. And literally just five miles away on the US side of Niagara Falls, you have property selling in the two to 300,000 range. They're the exact same house, just five miles away, separated by a border. So why the enormous difference in real estate valuation? Well, this example right here is the epitome of why housing is so unaffordable in Canada and compared to many areas of the United States. And it all comes down to one thing, regulation. See, regulation is good in some aspects, we want everybody playing by the rules, but the problem is we just have way too much government bureaucracy. See, I can tell you as a real estate investor who's bought and sold over 150 properties here in Canada, that if you want to try and build a home and build a business, good luck. This is why I never did it. This is why I only bought rental properties or flipped resale houses. I never got into the business of construction. Even though I'm a carpenter by trade, I did my entire apprenticeship. I had my own business renovating properties and even me. I still didn't want to get into building houses. Why? 
it takes too long. In order to build a single family house in Canada can take up to a year depending on the city. And most importantly, the fees are outrageous. So let me break down what a typical single detached family house looks like when you're trying to build it in most major cities. And this is gonna explain really quickly why housing is so expensive in Canada. So first things first, you got your building permits and your development charges. So even before you put a shovel in the ground to build most single family homes, it's gonna cost you about two hundred thousand dollars on one single family house to get all this approved and ready to build now we haven't even built the house yet so the cost of materials just to build the house is another two hundred and fifty thousand dollars now financing costs the whole time waiting for the permit to be available so a year plus the time of build, it's gonna be an average about $100,000 on that house in financing costs for the developer, the investor, taking the risk and waiting for the approval to build. Now, on a single family house like this, the builder is gonna to wanna to make a profit of about $200,000. That's pretty fair. But we still haven't even bought the land yet. Can't forget that. That 0.3 acres or half an acre to build a nice, decent house is gonna be approximately $200,000 for that lot. And that's on the low end. Now, if we add all of this up, that's $950,000, almost a million dollars for the average three bed, two bath house with a garage on 0.3 acres in Kitchener, Waterloo or Hamilton or any major city like that. A million dollars. That's why every other house is also that price. Now on the flip side, I'm now no longer investing in Canada, so I can attest to this as well. We're now building our real estate investment business down in the US, specifically Florida and Texas at the moment. And I can tell you firsthand from developing land, buying land, buying houses, oh my God, it's so different. To build a house and get your permits can take as, as quick as two weeks to a month. It does not cost $200,000 for permits and development charges. In fact, it's like 1% of that and it takes a month. And on top of that, land is not nearly as pricey as in Canada. I mean, in our business, we're constantly buying five acres, 10 acres in Florida for $15,000, $20,000. Yeah, 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 you heard that right. Five acres for $25,000 on average. That's what you can get in Florida, where it's warmer, where taxes are 0% in that state, and you're also surrounded by nice warm oceans. Did I mention it's warm and it has palm trees? Anyway, we'll get into that in one second. Now, stepping away from housing for a second, let's get into the economics of Canada. And the reality is we also have very, very low international and even domestic investment. See, R&D, research and development, is an important part of a society to move it along and to, to innovate, to incentivize people to make inventions and start businesses. Yet our research and development fund made up 1.6% of our national GDP, while the average in most G7 countries is 2.4% a year. Now, I checked out the US on their stats, and they're sitting at 3%, not surprising, they blow pretty much every metric out of the water when it comes to economics. So the US is heavily investing in its own society, investing in research, incentivizing businesses to do research to build their business, and the government is spending and funding these kinds of programs and research. So while top scientists and universities are trying to find the cure for cancer or other medical ailments, yeah, our government and our society isn't spending on that stuff. We're not innovating, we're not doing anything. And what that means in economics terms is we're not building our businesses. We're not building quality private sector jobs. I mean, at the time of filming this video, a recent jobs report just came out that was expected to gain 25,000 jobs in Canada in the month of June, 2024. And not only did we not gain 25,000 jobs, we actually went negative and lost 1,400 private sector jobs. And in the quarters before that, months and months and months, all of the job gains have been public sector government jobs. Basically for the past two years during this whole inflation cycle, Canada's economy has been knocked on its ass, not doing anything, not innovating. And last but not least, let's talk about boring old taxes. The reason why our economy isn't growing in GDP per capita, which is the most important in Canada, isn't growing, is because there's no incentivization to, to grow, to do anything. Why would you do anything when you're gonna pay 54% taxes? For every dollar you make, you only get to keep 46 cents. Why would you do anything? 
And this starts to happen for personal income over $230,000 a year. So if you're making over $230,000, every dollar after that, you're only getting 46 cents. What's the incentivization to grow a business, to make half a million dollars a year, a million dollars a year, to reach for the stars and really go for it and get that Canadian dream? What's the point? Whereas on the flip side in the US, their top tax bracket begins at $540,000 and every dollar after that is only taxed at 37% income tax. So that's a far cry from 54% and you have a much higher room to get to before you start even hitting that high tax, which most people aren't gonna make half a million dollars a year. So most people aren't gonna pay that top tax rate, which is the whole point is to reach and grow and get the American dream, the Canadian dream, get the house, get the car. That's the whole point. That's what moves an economy along. Now you can say that's bad or good, you know, to have a society filled of greed. Well, the reality is in economics terms, that means the country is growing, is gonna grow faster than everybody else because there's incentivization to do so. So with, with all that being said, guys, let me know in the comments below, what do you think is really holding back Canada from getting to where it needs to be? from getting out of this rut. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments. See you on the next one.